Norwegian brand Strum made quite a splash when they released their first watches a few years ago. Here's a new brand out of Norway producing watches with dials that are like nothing we've ever seen before. And they even have a special model that, if my memory doesn't fail me, contained wood from Viking times. Watch reviews were falling over themselves to get a copy to check out, but most models sold out before any samples made it around the world. A few days ago, we had another press release, and once again, we have dials that are possibly even more spectacular. This time around, inspiration is drawn from an island called Jan Mayen, which has no permanent human population. It is Norwegian territory, but it is closer to both Greenland and Iceland than Norway. But the stunning landscape of this island certainly lends itself to some creative inspiration. I have on hand both a green version, but also the red one, which is a special edition collaborating with Fratello, the online watch magazine. Inspired by the volcano on Jan Mayen Island, this red version will only be on sale for one week, starting 13 April 2023. So if you miss out, your only hope is secondhand. But the good news is, the other colours of black, white, blue and green will be part of the core collection and therefore not limited. But I predict still hard to get due to the high demand. So should you consider parting with 1600 euro or 1725 US dollars? Well, that's probably why you're here today, to get that answered, since it's not an insignificant amount of money for a relatively unknown microbrand. So let's go and visit the Arctic together, shall we? Since I am Swedish and my old neighbour country of Norway is very close language-wise, I can confirm if you're curious that Ström means current, as in sea current, which is appropriate for the seafaring nation that is Norway. There is another easter egg in the logo which I'll cover later, but first let's do sizes. This case is 39mm wide, but 42 if we include the crown. Lug to lug is 45.5mm, it is 11.5mm thick, and the integrated bracelet means that the 16.5mm lug width is insignificant. On bracelet size for me, it's 143g. I think the sizing here is absolute perfection even on my 19cm wrist. The previous Ophav model always looked a little bit big, being all dull. This unbelievable dull is quite something. I saw the pictures and became highly suspicious that this is all perfect lighting and great photography, but I'm telling you right now, it is absolutely as spectacular in person and on wrist as it is on your screen right now, with or without perfect lighting or fancy lenses. Just your eyeballs alone will give you exactly the same effect in person. It is mind-boggling how much it pops from barely any lighting. It's like some sort of gemstone under there, and for this craftsmanship alone, I think it's worth the price of admission. Let's not forget that super fancy dials is something Grand Seiko charges five times as much for. And I'm telling you right now, these dial textures are not inferior, and I've handled my fair share of Grand Seikos, including the one I own. My son immediately dubbed this the Sith Watch, and there has been mentions of both Eyes of Sauron and various other things, but even if red is not your colour, it's hard to argue with the flowing lava inspiration and the stunning detail and colour. The green one is no less spectacular with its shimmering surfaces that reminds me of the lakes in Scandinavian summers. I wish I had the white and black one too to compare with, since they are different in their dial designs, but they look no less spectacular online. The right approach here is to keep the dial clean, and the Strum logo at 12 is all that you'll find and that is perfect. The half S that is the logo Strum is clearly the silhouette of the front of a Viking ship, and is a detail as subtle as it is beautiful and clever. This alone makes me love this brand, although it's hard not to be biased for my Norwegian brothers I suppose. In between these indices, we have a small printed minute track, which is barely visible. 
For me, the applied indices are almost like claws holding the dial down and the tip of them float above the surface of the dial. There is plenty of loom applied to these, which we will check out a bit later. Keeping the fence post hand simple and the seconds hand almost insignificant is a good move since they are not the star of the show here, but the legibility is not an issue. So I suppose we need to talk about other aspects than just the dial. Covering the dial is a domed sapphire crystal with AR coating. The dome does offer some pleasing distortions at some angles and will reflect some light at the curve and enhance those minute tracks. I find this attractive, perhaps others won't. The fixed bezel is brushed as is the entire watch and considering that the stated purpose of these watches and the brand as a whole is to build a watch that will withstand extreme conditions, this is the way to go. Of course, there are subtle polished sections such as the sign crown, the bev on the bezel and the top of the crown guards line that follows the curved section on both sides, but overall the impression here is of a brushed and robust watch. The case is yet another iteration of the classic combination of squares and curves. Being quite thin, it sits so well on the wrist and those small curves down from the case means they won't float around on your wrist. The large crown guards protect the screw down crown well, which is signed with the logo and easy to grip. It pops nicely and it's just the right size, at least for me. Flipping the watch over means we get a full view of the La Joux Paré Calibre G101 with a signed rotor and very handy power reserve of 68 hours. The screwing case back has a list of specs, like for instance the 100 meter water resistance, but I must say I really miss the beautiful case backs of the Ophav. Those case backs were partially hidden by a mountain and fjord artwork that I found so attractive. But I suppose a big part of the budget this time is for this fancy movement, so perhaps it was deemed more important to see all of it. This bracelet starts at a fairly hefty 25mm and tapers all the way down to 18mm. It was custom designed and to adjust it you need to get used to the pin and collar system which includes the lugs. Some people hate this, but in fairness, you rarely have to worry about these bracelet systems failing, unlike screw pins, so whilst it's a bit annoying initially, it's probably more secure in the long run. I asked Lasse, one of the two men behind the brand about this, and he mentioned that to produce this slim and tight bracelet, the decision was made to go screw pins. They do however listen to feedback from existing and future owners, so if you're one of those, feel free to share with Lasse and Östen. This custom-made bracelet is most definitely attractive with its almost scales-like appearance, and I like it. But as with most scissor clasps I've come across, there are no micro-adjusts other than a couple half-links. It's lucky then that at least the one-way fastening with another logo displayed looks good and should hold up with its brushed finish. The micro-adjust is another issue that the team has earmarked for future improvements, so stay tuned. When the lights go out, we've got solid loom. Nothing fancy, but plenty of it. Let's check it out. So in this price range, you're up against the best of Monta, Oleg & Weiss, Christopher Ward and even Oris. Does the Jan Mayen hold up against that competition? 100% yes it does. These dials are some of the best I've ever seen. And if you're into this sort of thing, it offers Grand Seiko-like dial designs that are as good in person as they are in photos. Sure, it is missing a bracelet with micro adjusts but that is not uncommon on the competition in this price range either, so that is fair, and it's also 100% intentional. What you do get for your money here is a highly refined concept from the original Ophav, with perfect sizing, no unnecessary text on the dial to let that design shine, and the inspiration behind is quite clearly reflected in Scandinavian nature. Should you buy one? If you have the money and you like highly unique dials, then I think you've already answered that question. What do you think? 
please let me know in the comments and don't forget the red one is available for one week only. Thank you again for being here and I'll see you next time.